going to happen. MashaAllah. Allah says, Iqara kitabaka kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. Evidence that you're going to be shown all your videos, all your clips, all your posts, and you're going to be told, decide for yourself. Where do you want to go? Where do you think you deserve to go? Kafa bi nafsika al-yawm alayka hasiba. You can make a judgment against yourself today. That's what Allah says. So you're going to be shown this. And this is why the ones who used all of this wrongly, do you know what they're going to say? And I know people got upset with me when I said this the last time to say, who are you to judge? I'm not judging. Allah, I'm not judging. We judge ourselves. I don't want to judge anyone. I love everyone. To be honest with you, those who don't fulfill their salah, those who perhaps don't even dress appropriately, those who don't, there may come a time when they would be at a point turning to Allah, perhaps more than I have or will and others as well. Who am I to judge? But am I not allowed to just remind, to say, guys, this is not the right thing actually, or think about it. You can word it nicely. If I tell you, think about it. That's what I'm doing today. I'm just telling you, think about it. Is it wrong? Am I judging? The answer is no. Listen to what Allah says. On the day of judgment, the book is put. Whose book? Your books. Your book is put in front of you. What type of deeds? Allah says, there's the book. Read it yourself and decide where you want to go. So Allah says, فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا The criminals, meaning the people who were sinful, they used their time wrongly. They didn't turn back to Allah after turning away from Allah. That's an important way of wording it. Those who did not turn back to Allah after turning away from Allah, but rather turned away from Allah and forgot about Him and forgot about the day that they were going to meet Him. What will they say? They will look at this book and they will say, what is up with this book? It hasn't left anything Nothing small nor big. Everything is here. Every deed is in this book. What's wrong? How come Allah has brought the smallest thing here? In other words, Allah is telling us, you know what? The smallest of your deeds and the biggest of your deeds will all be in the book. So I have a problem. And so do you. What is the problem? I need to delete some stuff that I've done. And you have the same problem because you're just a human being living in the same era. So in the same way that I have things to delete, you too would have things to delete because like I said, we're using the same platforms. What to do? Well, you do two things. Number one, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, grant me forgiveness. Guide me. Oh Allah, open my doors. Oh Allah, strengthen me. And at the same time, make a difference by changing. If you seek the forgiveness of Allah and you're not interested in change, then that forgiveness is flawed. But if you seek the forgiveness of Allah and you're trying to change, then you're heading in the right direction. Even if you fall again, no problem, come back again. Each time you do the wrong thing, you should have regret in your heart. Each time you did the wrong thing, you fell into watching the wrong stuff or posting the wrong thing. Wallahi, you should feel saddened in your heart that you know what? I did the wrong thing. On the day of judgment, I will not be able to present this. Some people say, and I, like I say, I've spoken to a lot of people and the reason why I do, especially the youngsters, is because we want to know what's going on and we want to help. And they'll say, look, I'm not doing the haram, haram stuff, but I'm just doing... Like just haram stuff, you know. Now, that's a statement I've heard. What do you mean? I guessed that what they meant was I'm not doing a major sin, but just a minor sin. Okay, that's probably what they meant. I'm not doing the haram, haram stuff, but I'm just doing the haram stuff, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, 
let me ask you another question. And this is a powerful question for tonight. Do you know that on the day of judgment, there will be a scale? Do you know that your good deeds will be placed on the right, your bad deeds on the left? So I want to ask you a question. You know that you have deeds, okay? How many good deeds have you packed away that you can actually say, okay, I might have done, like the guy says, haram stuff, but I've done thousands and thousands of good things. I've prayed five times a day without missing. I read Quran every day. I actually did charities every day. I did so many good deeds every day. I kept the people who were making a noise in the back quiet by saying, shh, shh. That was also a good deed. MashaAllah. May Allah reward you guys, whoever it is. Wow, dead silence. Whoever did it is blessed, man. May Allah grant you Jannah without reckoning, man. Because I don't want to see my book. I'll be too embarrassed. So we ask Allah to give us Jannah without reckoning. Say Amen. We would be embarrassed if we saw our own book. So one of the tricks is to bypass that by saying, Oh Allah, give me Jannah without reckoning. Through your mercy. Don't even show me my deeds. Imagine my deeds. I'm going to just be, oh no, man. You know, my brothers, my sisters, you have a Lord who's merciful, very merciful, very kind and forgiving. What he wants from you is to at least to make an effort. That's what it is. Make an effort. Even if it is a small effort, you must make an effort. So here goes. We seek the forgiveness of Allah and we keep trying. And then, like I said, the question, the golden question, the most powerful thing that I feel I would say tonight is, Pack away as many good deeds as you can so that when the scale is placed in front of you and you start seeing, okay, there's a lot of bad coming. Okay, now let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, the good is coming in. Ooh, you can start smiling. Why? Because I see more good than bad. And that's what it is. So how many times do you read your Shahada? Shahada is not only for people reverting to Islam. It's for Muslims to read on a daily basis several times a day. Did you know that? No. Why? Because we didn't. Well, now you know. Repeat your shahada. Renew it. Refresh it. Reiterate it. Repeat it. It's the most powerful statement that you can utter. But it should come from the heart. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. So do good deeds, your adhkar. How many good deeds have you done? Sometimes, and this is why I say, when you ask the brother or the sister, well, look, you've done a few things that you're not very proud of, right? How many things have you done that you are very proud of? Do they outnumber these or not? If they do, keep it going and keep increasing it and don't decrease it. One thing I've learned is when you do not compromise your salah, you go very far in life. You hear that? When you don't compromise your five daily prayers, you go very far in life. And that's not easy. But if you're determined, they say where there is a will, there is a way. If you're determined, you will get there. So learn to increase these deeds by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have no such deeds, then who do you have to blame? The only thing you have in your life the main focus is around social media in a way that's a waste of time. I'm not even talking about the haram haram, okay? We're just talking about the haram, right? Something that's just a waste of time and that was your main focus. You spent your energy, your resources, your time, whatever else it was, your money, your effort, your brains, everything. Behind what? This. Fair enough. Nobody's going to tell you that it's haram haram, right? I hope you know the difference now. But it may be haram and it may not be haram, depending on what exactly you're doing. However, ask yourself, is this enough for me to meet Allah with? That's a good question. It shouldn't, it shouldn't frighten you to the degree where you get depressed. No, it should just give you a bit of a wake up call. That's all. A bit of a wake up call to say what? I'm going to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm going to show him, Oh Allah, I tried to do this for you, your sake. 
I tried to do that for your sake. Now, people say, okay, yes, yes, we helped the poor people on our street for a whole year. You know, we fed them. And when COVID, when the lockdown happened, we went around door to door giving people food and looking after them. And people might say, well, I was there out in the front line and I did this fair and good. Those are all good deeds. But hang on. Allah says the most loved deeds to me are which deeds? Which deeds? Who knows? Which deeds? Um, you said it so loud it was no longer a secret. Anyone else? Which deeds do you think Allah loves the most? Consistency, regularly, secret deeds. I'm looking for something. Yes? At the back. I still haven't got the answer I want. It's a hadith Qudsi. Allah says there is nothing more love to me that a slave could do than the deeds that I made compulsory on him. Did you ever hear that? So if someone says which deeds does Allah love the most, you got to say that which is farad. If he didn't love it, he wouldn't have made it far off. So what is it? Your salah, that which is compulsory, just the compulsory bit of it to begin with. And then you expand on it. Allah says that I love the most. So yes, it's good to help everyone. It's good to be on the front line. It's definitely something encouraged and taught in Islam. It's something that you must be doing. And yes, you will definitely be rewarded for it. But you, you need to know, don't lack in that which Allah loves the most. That's your prayer. That's your fasting. That's your charity to the poor. Help people with your finances. Become a better person. You know, a lot of the times marriages break because people don't know how to use social media. You're sitting and watching everyone else. Hey, mashallah, subhanallah, la ilaha illallah. All your dhikr is coming out, but for the wrong reasons. The wrong reasons. You're watching the wrong things and you're saying all these words, praising Allah. If do you know what you're doing here? And you realize what you're looking at and what you're saying are two opposite poles. You should be saying, astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa, etc. In fact, you shouldn't be there. You should... If there is something, you know, it's just like walking on a street. If there is something that you're not supposed to be looking at, you know, and you happened to, your gaze happened to pass by, you, you know, you control it, you look down. You may want to say a word in remembrance of Allah, but the minimum is you look down and you carry on doing your thing. Subhanallah. The same would apply online. People say, how could you be on there? There's so many Haram things there, you know, hang on, hang on. We don't dwell on it. The first nadra, it would apply on social media as well, which means the first glance that happened. Okay, fair enough. Flicked it. It is dangerous. I do agree because you know what shaitan does? He makes you want to follow to find out. You see a lot of the guys here. They follow all these girls, right? Even some of the older guys, they follow all these girls. You know what? My brother, you're living a fantasy, man. These people don't even want to look at your face. They don't even want to know who you are. They're honestly there just to make themselves feel good. I'm not going to discuss whether what they're doing is haram or halal because they may not even be Muslim. But at the end of the day, you've got all these follows. The only thing that's going to happen to you is on the day of judgment, right? Come here. Who did you follow on TikTok? Here's all the names. Who are these? You can't say Sheikh Beyonce. Sheikh. These are not, these are not Sheikhs. MashaAllah. If you focus on the right people and you follow them and you set the settings of your app in a way that you, you will mainly see what you've asked to see, then you're disciplined. So you follow good things. It doesn't all have to be directly connected to, you know, something to do with knowledge, but maybe something else. You might want to learn some cooking. You might want to do something. You might have an interest or two in life. You may follow certain people who may teach you those things. But if something's going to become vulgar and pornographic, what do you do? You don't follow. If something is a waste of time, you follow, you don't follow.